Welcome everyone. Hey, my name is Eugene and this is my little bitty cooking show for you to eat. And uh, I am all about whole foods, plant-based cooking. Oh, and uh, doctor's orders, no oils. I bet I got something good for you. And if you want to adopt a healthier way of eating, come on in, check it out. Hey, welcome everyone. Eugene here. Okay, so a question I see a lot of people ask, obviously when they first get started as well, how do I get started? Well, congratulations. You have made the decisions that you want to put your nutrition, your health first. Congratulations. Where do you get started? Well, hey, let's get started with breakfast, okay? Now, one thing uh, from, that I've learned for me, I've made oats a staple of my breakfast. If you hate oats, well, don't worry. There's, there's wiggle room, okay? So we're, we're going to be a plant-based eater now, no oils, and we're going to learn to read labels. One of the cereals that I was going to uh, pimp out today, uh, it was actually uh, promoted on uh, Engine 2 uh, by, by Rip Esselstyn, is the Uncle Sam's Wheatberry Flakes. And, I, and hell, I, did, I followed my own advice. I read the, uh, the label. They're throwing salt in it. A serving of this has 6% of my uh, daily sodium allowance. Well, I guess that's okay, but you know what? I'm wanting to kick sodium to the curb. The lower the sodium intake for me, particularly since I've had a history of high blood pressure, the lower my uh, sodium intake is, the better. So I'm going to start looking for options of, of this here. So read your labels. Okay, but oats are, are going to be a staple of your breakfast. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to go over some of the foods that I've got and what I've incorporated into my diet. Um, I don't have a vast uh, pool of things that I cook on a daily basis. I'm, I, I kind of keep it centralized. As my doctor told me, he said, hey, Eugene, you, there's only about 12 different items that you know, most people cook uh, for dinner or whatever that they rotate in and out of, and breakfast is probably going to be the same way. Uh, for me, most mornings I make a bowl of cereal, I throw in my uh, shredded wheat, I have been throwing in some of the uh, the wheat berry flakes. One other thing I throw in on top of it is just, just raw, uncooked, old-fashioned oats. Throw that in on my cereal, pour some nut milk on it, uh, almond milk, soy milk, uh, oat milk, whatever, throw that in on it and uh, top it with fruit, sweeten it with molasses, maybe a little maple syrup, and I'm on my way. But uh, uh, I've, I've learned some different things here. But what I want to do as well is incorporate and, and share uh, some of the staple items that I'll use for dinner, use them for breakfast too, use them for lunch. So you're going to find that there's different things here. But let's show a sampling of what I use and what I buy and the little tips and tricks that I've got. Uh, of course, okay, so you're a plant-based eater. Well, eat fruits, okay? Just raw fruits. That's a great breakfast for you. Smoothies. There's a, not, a, not a bit of a controversy. Some nutritionists suggest that, that, that you want to chew your fruit, release the saliva. The saliva helps convert uh, different chemical compounds in your foods into other chemical compounds, which help your, arter, your, your artery function, your endothelial response, the, the release of nitric acid, which helps with, it, with your heart health and the like. If you're coming to this with a, uh, a background and you've had some heart disease, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, that's going to be a lot more important to you. I recommend you focus on that. If you're going to have a smoothie, I don't think it's be an absolute deal breaker, but hey, we're doing this for our health. So if you do a smoothie, you want to be sure and chew it. Release the, the, the saliva, get that flow going, get that incorporated into it. Okay, so one of the things for me that I would recommend for a newcomer that you go out and get, if you're wanting to adopt a plant-based, whole food diet with no oils, okay, is get you a good waffle iron. Get you a waffle iron that has a ceramic coating, okay? I'll have a link down below to my, my web page there. Well, I'll have a link where you can get this one here that has a ceramic coating. I love it. 
some foods will stick to it a little bit, but you know what? And it's not that the waffle is going to stick so much. You learn to fish it out. Sometimes it's a little task to, to get it to release, but it, it, it typically they release well and, it, and it's not a problem. I, I love my waffle iron. I ain't going to live without it, okay? So that said, get you a waffle iron. Another thing you may want to, uh, you're, you, some of these things here you, you might have to order to get started uh, on the program. But, I mean, all you need to do is go to the produce section, get some food, go get you some cereal, get you some oats, like I said, get you some, uh, some wheat flakes, uh, shredded wheat. Read your labels, okay? We're looking for whole wheat. If it says wheat, it says other things, and it doesn't say whole, you may want to, you don't want that. That you, We want to take advantage of the whole foods. That's the whole thing behind this here. So uh, we're going to get us some breakfast cereals. Get you a bag of frozen berries. Berries are going to be an important part of your, your diet. Hopefully you don't have any uh, allergies or whatever there. I'm pretty much, the only thing I'm allergic to is work, okay? So... I don't need to worry about that so much. Uh, get you a bag of frozen berries. I would buy the fresh berries, but hell, I got tired of, you know, after two days, three days, my raspberries are mush, and I wind up throwing them away. Buy those berries for your special occasions, but keep a bag in your freezer. What we're looking to do is set you up. That way you get up in the morning, and you're not going to have an excuse to go to the taco shack down the road or the, you know, the greasy spoon diner and get something there. We've got our cereals covered. Overnight oats is a great, great breakfast. You get up, you don't want to eat oats with... Uh, what, you know, uh, with, with fruit, we'll make you a waffle. That's what that waffle iron's for. Okay, one thing I want you to add to your arsenal is chickpea flour. You can get this at Indian grocery stores, Asian grocery stores here. I'll put a link down uh, where you can get it online. It's also called Besan, B-E-S-A-N. Um, it, it's a yellow flour. Basically, it's, it's, it's a chickpea or gabonzo bean flour. This you can use to make omelets, savory omelets. You want to make a savory waffle, you can combine this with other things. Combine it with oats. Okay, you're going to want to spice it up. Spices. Powdered garlic. I buy this stuff in bulk now. I find that I will dump powdered garlic, onion powder, and cumin powder. Cumin is uh, what gives uh, Mexican food that smoky flavor that that I love. You're going to want to do that. Or you just go to your spice section at your local grocery store and, and get those there. Then you're going to find you're going to want to get these things in bulk. Flax meal. We're going to use this to... Uh, you can make a flax egg, a binder using the flax seed. I will throw that in my waffles. I will throw that uh, to make a French toast, a vegan French toast. Take your soy milk, your almond milk. The ratio that, that a lot of people recommend is uh, one tablespoon of flax meal, ground flax meal, not just the flax seed. Ground flax meal, one tablespoon of flax meal to a tablespoon of water equals one egg. I don't See that, but you know what? I tend to free ball. I throw it in, add in some water, or you know, add you, you want to uh, throw add in uh, more nutritional, throw in some nut milk, plant milk, whatever, and then let it sit for a couple of minutes. And if it looks like goopy, the consistency of an egg, you got it. it makes a great binder. So get you some uh, flax seed. One other thing. Nutritional yeast. Now, granted, you're just looking at a foil bag here, but nutritional yeast is nice and flaky. It gives a cheese-like flavor, that nice savory, I'm going to call it that umami flavor, that, and you can make a lot of different cheese sauces. Take this, sprinkle it on your, your, uh, your morning omelet, okay? Um, buy you some fresh tomatoes, onions, cilantro, lime juice, make you a pico de gallo, make our own salsa, a good low sodium salsa. Also, you can add to it. When you're making your own omelet, your own uh, morning omelet, 
You can make it with the chickpea flour. I'll have a, a link below on my webpage. Or I'll link to some recipes for a chickpea flour omelet. You're going to want to get some kala namak. I call it my stinky salt. It has a little bit of a sulfur smell to it. Um, it's a darker salt. I don't add salt to my dishes other than this. This here is pretty much my only salt that I'll keep around the house nowadays. Just a, And a little dab will do. This stuff is, is, is powerful here, but this will help give uh, a, a nice eggy taste, that nice skunky, uh, sulfury smell to an omelet, which uh, lends itself to the taste. Uh, another thing which is going to add flavor to a lot of your sauces is going to be miso paste. That's what I like to use. Um, just a little dab will do you. Uh, remember, it's got sodium in it, but just a little bit, just, just a smidge will give you a little bit of flavor here. Um, your Tabasco sauce, yes, it has salt in it, but if this is, if you're not adding salt to your food and just a little bit in your flavorings, I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker here. I love chipotles. Chipotle with adobo, uh, this La Costena blend. Whoop. Let's uh, get, get my tongue realigned here. The La Costena brand of uh, chipotles, I love that. There's no oils in it. You got to read your labels. Uh, I found that the, some of the, a lot of the uh, chipotle sauces will have that. This is some hot stuff here, so a dab will do you. Um, silken tofu. You're going to use this here uh, in, to give creaminess. Uh, you can buy this. It's shelf stable. Check the link down below. Show you where you can get some. I bought this online. Uh, it's shelf stable. It's a very creamy, um, organic, firm. Tofu. Now you're going to hear some people saying that if you eat tofu and soy, you're going to get cancer of the butthole. Women, you're going to grow testicles on. Forget all that stuff. That that's a, to me that's misinformation. The people of Okinawa, Japan, eat more tofu than a man ever seen. They eat a bunch of it, and they typically live. There's a lot of people there living to be 100. So uh, I'm not buying. Don't buy the hype about tofu. Get the organic tofu. Yes, our soy products here in the U.S. are GMO, are loaded with pesticides, and they're crap foods. So we're going to buy the uh, the non-GMO organic tofu, and you're going to be fine. Relax, chill. Um, another spice that I love is chili powder. Once again, finally, I, I broke down, read the directions. This contains sodium dioxide. So uh, go to the grocery store, go to the Mexican grocery store, or check the link down below. I'll show you. You can get your own guajillo peppers, ancho peppers, grind them up, add some of the dried cumin, some garlic powder to it. You're going to make your own chili powder. That goes great for me on hummus. Um, Hummus. You can make garbanzo bean hummus, based hummus, or just some good beans. Uh, buy you some good organic beans. Uh, Kroger brand. That's the store close to me. I love their uh, their, their commitment to uh, uh, keeping a, a selection of organic foods. I've got. I live near a. a uh, I'm in the hood kind of here, and we don't have a big, uh, fancy Kroger store. We got one of the smaller ones, and. I can buy everything I need for my plant base for the most part from the, the grocery store, and that's quite a bonus here. Uh, canned organic tomatoes, great for sauces. So uh, we've got a lot of options here with what I've shown for you, and uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Take it slow. Take my advice, share with me, put your comments down below the video. I'd love to hear some things that you started off with. All you got to do is get that ball rolling. So I've given you some great ideas for breakfast. Now hold on. When my doctor convinced me, and I, I, I was very fortunate, I, I thank Dr. Emil Solis in uh, Houston, the spring area. He read me the riot act. He told me I was heading down the wrong road. He told me that I needed to go plant-based whole foods. He's the one who got me pushed in this direction here. While he was talking to me, my head was spinning and I thought about my coffee. Okay, used to be my morning routine was I would get up, I would step on a puppy if need be. I'd step on my mother's face, God bless her, to go get my coffee in the morning. I would go to that store, that big coffee chain, get my coffee, 
pour my creamer in it, and I would get a cranberry orange scone. I'm not doing that anymore. But that's what I thought about. What am I going to do for my coffee? I can't live without my coffee. Well, I use uh, soy milk now. I have my own little espresso machine, cappuccino maker. I make super strong coffee. I love that. Pour in uh, some froth, soy milk, oat milk, almond milk, and I sweeten it with jaggery. Um, I, I was sweetening it with... Um, with maple syrup, but that shit's expensive. So we're going with jaggery now, and that, that, that's a bit cheaper. Uh, one other little tip I've, I've done here is a uh, little, little something in the morning is my bourbon vanilla. Yeah, this is a bottle of bourbon, but there's a bunch of vanilla beans in there, if you can see it there. Um, I'll, I'll give you a close-up of it here. I put a dozen vanilla beans in a bottle of bourbon, let it sit for 90 days. Every other day you walk around, you see it, give it a good shake here. About a half a teaspoon and a cup of coffee gives it a great vanilla flavor. So I've got my coffee down. Uh, is, is coffee an ideal food, uh, an ideal thing to be drinking for your health? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care what, you know, I'm going to do that. And I'm doing fine. I've been on a whole foods, plant-based diet for a little bit over four months, and I've lost 30 pounds. So, yeah, your eyes aren't deceiving you. I'm not what we call skinny. Um, I, I've got a few more pounds to lose, but I am committed to this diet, to this way of living. I hope you liked the video. I hope I sh uh, gave you some uh, ideas. All you got to do is get started. Love your produce section. Get you some cereals some plant milks, get you some spices going. Um, I, I want you to get your pantry filled with things that, that, that are always going to be there. Learn to, to mix and match. Be sure and get your chickpea flour. Keep you, always keep you some canned beans, some sauces. You don't have to learn how to make everything all by yourself, by yourself at home. Um, ultimately, I would recommend start making your own salsas. Uh, all of the store-bought salsas have salt in it and, and have junk in it. Uh, some are better than others. Here uh, in Texas, I buy the Clint's salsa. It has a fairly low sodium content. I'm committing, I'm going to start making my own salsa, my own pico de gallo to put on foods. Hope you enjoy the video. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Click subscribe. Share your ideas, your things that you've done, your advice for newcomers. If you would, share it in the video down below. Thanks for watching. Y'all come back now, you hear?